Good morning and welcome to uh, this session on indoor air quality and active treatments. Uh, I am Ray Malady. I'm going to moderate this session today and I'll introduce some of my, uh, my co-moderators in just a moment. Uh, by way of introduction, my background is predominantly in maintenance operations. I grew up in maintenance operations, started on the front lines as a cleaner and a diesel tech. And so from a, a, a from a perspective of that, a lot of my presentations will come, or a lot of the content today will come from that background. I spent about two decades at SEPTA in Philadelphia in operations. I went over to work at New Jersey Transit in maintenance operations for two years, and then went up to Albany, New York, uh, in, in upstate New York, and I was the CEO there for a period of about eight years before jumping over to the private side to work with Barry Dykeman and Bobby Atwell and Sonny Gordon and the team here at uh, United Safety and Survivability. I also continue to work within the industry at associations uh, like CUDA and APTA. I chair the RCA Council in Washington, DC, research, communication and advocacy. We do a lot of work uh, advocating for federal policy and dollars. And I also chair the business members legislative committee I'm going to turn it over quickly to a couple of my uh, co-hosts. Uh, I'm going to start with Patty Kiwiz for a quick introduction and then Paul Strobus. Good morning. I am Patty Kiwiz. I am the transit director here at Green Bay Metro. I have been here for just about 18 years. And I think I have held majority of the positions here within the department. So I started down in operations and I was finance manager as well as that's my background and have then went to assistant director and director. So I have been running the department here now and leading it for the last seven years. So welcome and I'm excited to be part of this today. Welcome, Patty. Paul? Oh, good morning all. My name is Paul Strobus. I'm the director of paratransit operations in Broward County, Florida. Uh, most of you would probably know more the Fort Lauderdale area. Uh, I've been in the paratransit industry for a little over 20 years. Uh, my first 10 were at the MBTA in Boston, Massachusetts. Last 10 have been uh, down here in South Florida. Uh, look forward to uh, the presentation. Thank you. Paul moved south for the sunny weather, so no, no question. And just north of Paul, Ram Loriano. Ram? So my name is uh, Ram uh, Ramilo Loriano. Uh, everybody calls me Ram. I'm here with Tony Julian, also uh, one of our VPs of the uh, business and product development. Um, I'm the commercial sales manager. Um, I've been in the company for about eight years, seven to eight years. Um, my background is uh, managing operations and sales. Uh, through uh, my years as a GM and Hertz and Costco Wholesale, and then now an RGF. Um, and I'm uh, here to just try to uh, just tell you a little bit more about RGF, what we do, our products, and I'm looking forward for the presentation. Welcome, Ram. I'm going to share my screen here and get right into the details um, momentarily. So just an overview of the presentation today, and we're going to go through about eight to 10 slides. I'm going to talk about ideas and concepts that can really help us to mitigate um, not only COVID-19, but, but just really improve the safety of the interior of our, our vehicle. So when, when I talk about these technologies, I'm going to talk about a group of technologies, but then I'm going to, I'm going to focus in on technologies that we think are the best fit for a uh, not only a commercial application, but a rolling stock application, be it a rail car, a paratransit vehicle, or a, a standard transit bus. So I'm going to talk about who we are, United Safety and Survivability. I'm also going to talk about our partners. Ram and Tony are here with us today from RGF, and uh, they have deep experience with this technology on the commercial markets. I'm going to talk about a product overview, kind of a history of use, uh, the maintenance of this, uh, life cycle cost of this uh, uh, installation, and then go over some different applications uh, specific to transit, bus, rail, talk a little bit about third party testing. I think it's important, again, if I put my operations hat on, um, I think we balance inquiry with advocacy. And I think, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really focus on due diligence and the importance of, of asking the right questions and asking for the right information. And then I'm gonna finish this up with kind of the one-two punch. I'm gonna focus on active air, 
and, and air treatment inside that vehicle. Um, and then I'm gonna finish with uh, more of the surface aspect of, of what we can do to extend um, surface cleaning and, and disinfection in between cleanings. A little bit about who United Safety and Survivability is. The, the, the photo on the lower right is a drone shot of our headquarters. We have about 500,000 square feet just south of our Canadian friends in Exton, Pennsylvania. Um, within that building, we have three divisions. We have our operator safety division, which manufactures operator safety, uh, predominantly seating for military, fire truck, ambulance, transit, and rail markets. Um, we also would manufacture those seats for everything from a pedestal design, which you would have found in a, in, a, in a rail application or an older vehicle, to air suspensions, to what are today very advanced semi-active and active duty suspensions, meaning we have technology today that can eliminate road vibration and really reduce fatigue for the operators. Um, our passenger seating division uh, uh, manufactures seating and ADA securement systems for um, commuter rail, uh, coach markets and transit bus applications. And then our safety technology division manufactures fire suppression, fire detection, um, COVID mitigation technologies, safety lock. Safety lock is, is a technology we've, we've deployed to eliminate bus rollaways or bus thefts, where when the operator leaves that seat, the bus cannot, cannot move. We, we reset the PP1 valve and place the vehicle in neutral or reset the, the brake on that vehicle. And then our partners um, in RG, uh, RGF Environmental, uh, located with a large footprint in the state of Florida, um, just experts in the engineering and manufacturing of when we think of water, uh, food, and air treatment systems. They've been doing this for 35 years, and some of the technologies I'm going to talk about have been around for, uh, for decades, and these are proven technologies. We started with questions. I mean, so anytime we if we turn the clock back to January of 2020, we recognize that this, the challenge with, with SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, known as COVID-19, um, was that th this was an aerosolized uh, virus. The, the, the surface, the, there was so much focus on cleaning and disinfection of surfaces, but the reality is we knew that the real challenge was the aerosols, the submicron aerosols that are suspended in the air that, that remain suspended in the air and circulate for hours within a day. And so we wanted to implement a proven technology that was hostile toward viral and bacterial pathogens, but had no harm to human presence. And we wanted to use that technology with a return on investment to enable our folks in operations to go back to more routine cleaning and disinfection cycles. Look, the, the folks that I worked with in operations all were telling me that they could not, the labor investment was unsustainable, the chemical consumption was unsustainable. They knew they were doing damage to some of the surfaces with the, with the products that they were using to disinfect, uh, repeatedly disinfect the interior of that bus. And so um, we wanted to implement this technology to really improve the cleaning and disinfection efforts, but also uh, provide a return on investment to allow these properties to go back to more routine cleaning and disinfection cycles. Ultimately, we wanted to create a dynamic antimicrobial environment in these buses and rail cars that never existed before. Meaning we wanted to come out of SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19 uh, pandemic with a better end user product to provide to the riding public and the operators of those vehicles. And we wanted to do it cost effectively. I'm gonna share a 45 second video that highlights and animates the technology. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow this video talking about two things, humidity and hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is naturally occurring in the air. It's produced as a result of um, UV from the sun in outdoor spaces. Indoors, the hydrogen peroxides aren't here. They're not being produced. Indoor spaces are much more prone to having viral particles hanging in the air. In public transportation, there's no way to effectively address this virus without treating the air inside that vehicle all day long. And this technology does just that. United Safety's Active Air system with UV PHI technology by RGF was found to be extremely effective at lowering the bacterial load in the airspace. These units pass untreated air over the active air purification system and out the other side. The water vapor molecules pass over the catalyst 
They are ionized to create hydrogen peroxide molecules from the water vapor molecules naturally occurring in the air. The UV PHI system would be installed in the HVAC system downstream as close to the occupant space as possible. Once the hydrogen peroxide molecules are created, the HVAC blower will transport those molecules to the entirety of the bus or train. The hydrogen peroxide molecules actively kill any pathogens, viruses, bacteria that might be in the air and surfaces of that vehicle. We can reduce the flu, we can reduce the bacteria, we can improve you know, the health and safety of the environments where there's a lot of traffic. So with this technology, we have the ability to enhance the safety of the passenger and the operator and bring mobility back to people. And so two things I'll highlight there. Number one, we're using a, a natural element in hydrogen peroxide. Everybody knows what hydrogen peroxide is. Everybody has that brown bottle in their medicine cabinet. In liquid form, we've used it for years to disinfect, and we know that it works. We're doing the same thing. We're using the same chemistry at the molecular level, not, not vapor, not liquid, but at the molecular level. Um, and, and we're doing it by using moisture that is naturally occurring in the air. So from a, from a technical standpoint, we're taking H2O and we're running that moisture, that, that, that humidity in the air across this quad metallic hydrophilic catalyst and we're creating uh, hydrogen peroxide 0.02 parts per million off the catalyst when it when it enters inside the occupied space it's, it's in the parts per billion range and and very highly effective at that range it's what you would find in natural environments clean outdoor air we're replicating that using technology inside the vehicle so humidity to hydrogen peroxide at the molecular level and then back to humidity again. It's a, it's a, a continuous production consumption cycle. I want to highlight why we selected Ficel technology because we, uh, you know, our catalog includes all of these products. We can sell ionizers. We can sell uh, just a, a standard UV bulb, a static UV bulb. If anybody remembers early in the, in the pandemic, we saw photos of these buses with UV bulbs hanging inside them and rail cars and New York City Transit. Just imagine the labor that went into setting all of that up, letting it sit there for a while and then tearing it all down. We call that a, a static technology. Um, a, 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 a PCO device is like a bug zapper. You have a profile you have to bring the germs to, viral or bacterial, to kill them. When we, when we came across Ficel and, and we sat down with RGF, we looked at this technology and clearly this was the best fit for this environment because we created this active technology. Instead of waiting for the germ profile to come back to that evaporator to be treated with some of these other units um, or, or you know, some of the requirements with these other units, we were bringing the battle out to the virus. We were actively treating the air around that bus operator, around that rail operator, around the customer all day long. Um, and the last one is an ionizer. I mean, we, we, we have ionizers. We, we, we uh, sell and offer and manufacture as part of our, our catalog. An ionizer is an agglomeration device. It's a magnet. Um, think of it as something that will bring pathogens together to make them either heavier. So instead of remaining suspended for an hour, 10 hours, they, they remain suspended for maybe three hours. And it also makes them easier to filter. Whereas photohydronization attacks these viral and bacterial pathogens in the air around people all day long. Clearly the best option for allowing us to improve the safety, but also return to more routine cleaning and disinfection cycles. I wanna hit two things on this slide. Number one, we wanted to, to make sure that this was a proven technology and it is. There are uh, north of 4 million units in service around the world. They've been used in hospitals and commercial buildings, uh, airports, lab environments, it's used by FEMA and all of their trailers, it's used by major hotel chains. This is not a new product. It's been around, it's been proven, and it's been deployed um, for many, many years in commercial markets. We simply engineered it and applied it to rolling stock environments. And I also wanna hit the fact that there are significant testing that exists for kill rates. And I'm gonna highlight a couple in just a minute on not only SARS-CoV-2, but also avian flu, H1N1. So when you think about improvement safety of, of just transmission of, of the seasonal flu or the common cold, we can make things better for public transit environments 
And this technology is a big piece of that. And the second piece, it, we, we wanted something that was proven safe. Um, there is no additive ozone with this, this technology. Um, we, we do not overproduce H2O2. It's, it's, it's been tested extensively. We produce at 0.02 parts per million off the catalyst. The OSHA standard in the U.S. is one part per million uh, over an eight-hour weighted average. And there is no UVC detectable, uh, you know, when we're talking outside of the unit within 15 centimeters. And so we don't violate any warranties. Your major um, air conditioning suppliers are some of the, the, the largest consumers of this technology in the world. And we're simply applying it to that bus and rail car. And I've already talked about molecular hydroperoxide and what it is. And so um, I'm going to highlight two tests that I think are, are the most uh, relevant to public transit. One is obviously SARS-CoV-2. Everybody wants to know, you know, how, how do you uh, stack up against SARS-CoV-2? We tested uh, this product in a um, 1,280 cubic foot test lab, innovative, um, uh, innovative bio lab, bioanalysis laboratories in Cypress, California, third party testing. We aerosolized the SARS-CoV-2, not a surrogate. We didn't, we didn't say we're gonna use this surrogate instead of SARS-CoV-2. We used the actual SARS-CoV-2 virus. We inoculated this on stainless steel coupons and placed it within that uh, test lab, but we also nebulized it in the air. And what we, what we observed in that testing, not us, but the third party, was an immediate and sustained um, um, elimination of that viral uh, pathogen, both air and surface. And the other one that I think is really relative to this technology is the sneeze test. Uh, with Ficel, we have the ability to kill a germ profile, 99% of a germ profile within three feet of an individual. The reality is on public transit, not everybody um, will cover their sneeze properly and, and you get a germ profile. And most technologies, that germ profile is to travel to the evaporator or travel up into the uh, air conditioning unit in order to be treated. We treat the air around the person, around the individual all day long. So that sneeze profile, that germ profile, that illness is going to be treated at the spot. Um, I'm gonna hit testing, extensive testing, but some of the, the rolling stock testing, um, hydrogen peroxide creation limits, um, clear pass, um, shock and vibe testing, uh, rail and, and bus, clear pass, ozone creation, no additive levels. And some of these tests were extreme where they would close the doors, close the windows and run the unit for 10 hours and measure ozone and measure hydrogen peroxide and clear passes and all of that. And then I'm gonna highlight, um, we can't bring a virus onto a bus, but we can measure microbials. And this is a property that chose to do extensive testing on their own and they measured microbials over time. And what they did was they took two vehicles, one with Ficel technology installed and one without it. And they, they went 14 days with no disinfection. And the blue line on this graph represents a sustained su suppression of these microbials. And if you take a look after 14 days, we were still in the very clean zone uh, within the interior of that vehicle. Without the technology, you see a continued growth of these microbials in that vehicle. And so the point I really wanna highlight here for the folks in operations is there is a true return on investment. This allows you to go back to when I was a cleaner, we cleaned and disinfected. We did our standard pick and clean, but we cleaned and disinfected every week. And then every month we did a more, much more detailed in-depth cleaning and disinfection. So this testing, I think, illustrates that. WSP did some testing in Philadelphia and also found, this was using CFUs, colony form units, uh, one test an hour for three hours, front, middle, and rear vehicle. And um, I'll just highlight, if you look to the graph on the right, you'll see that, um, you'll see that they're both air and surface. The orange block represents the vehicle with technology. The blue blocks represent without technology and, and, and a clear continued suppression of these microbials inside this bus all day long. And the bus with the technology had four times the number of riders. They could not control the ridership level, but clearly an example. I'm gonna hit some various kit off offerings and then I'll Turn this over to uh, Ram at RGF after I hit these kit offerings and go through these last slides to talk about the technology offerings from his perspective. You know, one of the things we pride ourselves at United Safety on is we don't just manufacture a product and supply a product. We have a very robust field service team that will come out to the facility and work with your team either to train that team or to do the installation turnkey. 
And so everything from bus and paratransit, rail, SUV, van, any HVAC spec, our team has installed these units on uh, New Flyer, um, ADL, uh, Gillig, Nova Bus, uh, Proterra, BYD, uh, school bus applications, first responder applications, any rolling stock environment that you can think of. We are the OEM preferred unit for Gillig in the US. If a Gillig bus is ordering somebody wants a standard indoor air treatment uh, technology, this is the technology that would be installed. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's up to the end user to be turnkey, have our tech, techs do it, or do a first fit with your team on site, train your team and have them install it. Uh, paratransit, here's a couple examples. I know Paul's gonna hit this from his perspective in Broward County. Um, he's done all of his paratransit vehicles and uh, they're currently moving into some uh, fixed route testing as well. But the paratransit vehicle is a standalone unit, uh, 60 CFM fan, weighs about five pounds, surface mount. Uh, we wired direct to 12 or 24 volts. Um, and this is the same unit that you would find installed in say some uh, commercial applications for a boardroom or an office type environment. Rail car applications, um, obviously uh, a, a little bit more detailed in terms of the first fit engineering uh, process. Our, our experts come on site, we take a look at the volume of air inside that vehicle, we take a look at the makeup air, and we take a look at the, the door opening closing cycles, and we, we determine the capacity based upon those things, um, and we develop a, uh, a plenum kit for each application. Here's a quick example of, of some of the properties that have deployed this technology, and it's only been available really since Q4 of last year, so three quarters. Many of many of uh, many other properties have these units um, in test phase. Um, Capital Metro, um, Tallahassee, Chapel Hill. I'll highlight F dot. F dot did a, an extensive evaluation of a of, uh, of a dozen proposals and and selected this as the clear winner for the state of Florida for all heavy duty transit and paratransit vehicles. Uh, Long Island Bus and Nassau Link Transit out west. Brantford Transit uh, recently move to retrofit Kitsap, Sunshine Line with us today. I'm gonna to give a shout out to Patty at Green Bay because she was the early adopter of this technology, but many others, Redwood Transit, Humboldt, and uh, this is just a sampling of those properties. I'm gonna end with uh, two slides here, uh, what, what I call the one-two punch. So Ficel is the active air treatment. It kind of moves you away from that static or passive. Look, if you clean and disinfect a vehicle, somebody walks on, they have SARS or the COVID-19 or seasonal flu, that disinfecting that surface does nothing. Treating the air around people does, and that's why Ficel is so, so critical. Um, this is a transit study performed by, um, I'm gonna highlight Aegis Microband here on the surface side of things. Go Transit did a side-by-side -side test, and they found out with the application of this antimicrobial, they saw a five-time reduction between treated and non-treated surfaces. And so you clean, disinfect, you apply Aegis Microband, and allows you to be cleaner between cleaning. Really an effective way to extend disinfection cycles. Um, if you look at it under a microscope, it's a bed of nails, you can't see it, you can't feel it, but it allows the elimination of these enveloped uh, microbes as they land on surfaces. So it's really that one-two punch um, that I wanted to highlight with this team to kick off the uh, discussion here today. I'm gonna to stop sharing my screen um, I know I covered a lot in, in 20 minutes here, um, and I want to turn it over to Rom. Rom, I know I hit a lot of technical points. Um, your team on the RGF side has been doing this for so many years, and you have so much invested in the testing side of this. Uh, let me turn it over to you for your perspective in front of the audience here today. Thank you. Uh, yes, like you just said, uh, you did cover a lot and uh, make my... Uh, make my job a lot easier here. So uh, I am going to uh, share my screen here uh, for a second. Let me know if you guys can see it. You're good. Okay, so I'm just going to talk a little bit more about RGF and uh, PHI cell um, and our technology. So, RGF Environmental Group uh, is a company with over, was founded about 35 years, uh, over 35 years 
uh, with uh, experience in designing, engineering, and manufacturing. Uh, you know, and our products are chemical free treatment systems for all air, water, and food. Um, it's an American owned company. Um, and it is here in Florida. We manufacture everything here in our house uh, in the facilities that you see there on the picture uh, here in Riviera Beach that have expanded a little bit um, um, this past couple of years uh, with another facility where I am right now, which is to the corner of the end left of this picture. There's another facility where we at now. And we also expanded uh, two facilities in Lakeland, Florida towards the middle center of Florida. Uh, that way in the event that uh, a hurricane uh, hits the east coast of Florida, then uh, we can still operate in our Lakeland facility uh, where we also have CNC laser cutting machine and we can we can continue operations through uh, through that facility until we can get back up into this, uh, into the east, uh, our main facility here in, in Riviera Beach. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more um, about IAQ or indoor air quality. Um, so through all this past year of uh, COVID-19, things pretty much are still the same when it comes to, uh, but a little bit more enhanced when it comes to um, indoor air quality. So what we want to do first is always determine what the customer wants to achieve. They want clean air, they want cleaner, more effective, or more efficient HVAC systems, or both. So we have the technologies to help you. Um, we go from, we provide all the tools, we go from filtration, HEPA, with filtration, and uh, with HEPA and UV uh, integrated, we do lucidium UV, and our main technology, uh, PHI, uh, which is the one that um, that we're talking about today the most. Um, so we do induct uh, with different type of models. We also go wall mount systems, portable systems. With the lucidium UV, we go in coils as well as, uh, as air um, and treating um, occupied spaces. And we do specialty system for restaurants, uh, trash uh, growth houses in, uh, in the agriculture. We do specialty systems as well. Um, today, we're gonna focus more about our main technology, our PHI with the, with the units that you guys um, have in, in or, or may have in your buses or, or are interested in, which is our, our PHI cell. It's a proprietary advanced oxidation technology using very simple, I know uh, Ray pretty much already explained everything. So we try to recreate what already happens in, the, in, the, in nature, which you have already seen on Ray's video. Uh, it is simple as a UV light uh, with a catalyst and hydrogen from the air, creating uh, our PHI process and releasing the hydrogen peroxide in the air, um, which is with a, a broad spectrum UV uh, light um, uh, hitting that catalyst and releasing that that um, that hydrogen peroxide that will go out uh, killing both in air and surfaces. So, as you can see, also like you saw in the uh, in the video, PHI technology use, utilizes the broad spectrum high intensity UV uh, light uh, target on the on the hydrated catalyst surface. Um, and it covers, you know, covers all our quad metallic and hydrophilic coating uh, on the cell. Um, and then, you know, all the process again releases uh, the, the hydrogen peroxide go both to kill both in air and surfaces. Um, we do, uh, our technology is, uh, it's been tested both here uh, and also third party with the University of Kansas. And, um, and it's been developed for 20 years uh, with, again, independent testing as well as third party. Um, validated in, uh, by numerous companies. Uh, we have over 4 million uh, PHI cells installed out in the, in the, in the, the market, out in the, uh, in the field. It kills bacteria and viruses, redu um, reduces viruses and bacteria up to 99%. Um, 
And as you saw us on the video, as Ray um, explained, um, our sneeze test. Uh, we do we do have um, one of two sneeze test machine that was created also here in RGF, um, just to recreate what a human sneeze uh, will look like and 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 will do. And our technology proven that will kill about three feet. Uh, in, into um, into that sneeze, so it is effective um, three feet into it. Um, RPHI cell validation also has been proven against other type of viruses, H H1, N1, swine, um, MRSA, um, and numerous other viruses if, that we can actually provide you guys with a uh, a document that has all the all the viruses of, that the PHI technology have been tested against. Um, and uh, we do have numerous different type of uh, uh, PHI models uh, with the going induct into uh, smaller air conditioning uh, units uh, to the ones that in transit, then big commercial units like our CMLs, et cetera. It is a PHI cell. Is, is automated, no operator input. Uh, it continues to operate 24 seven, protecting the, the, the space. Um, again, both in, airs and, uh, in the air and surfaces. It is very easy install and RGF has been, uh, in the past years, we've been dedicated to make sure that we provide equipment that is not also the most effective, but also a very easy install for for that contractor that goes out there to do the installation. Um, again, it eliminates 99% of viruses, bacteria, mold, odor, uh, uh, you name it, every, every type of, every type of uh, that, uh, the, the bacteria that we've been test on, it, it reduces it to 99%. Um, so it's a very low maintenance piece of equipment, uh, no filters, but we do have other equipments like the HEPAs that we do offer as well. Um, so it is, it is the cell uh, lasts about, uh, we, we recommend to be changed about every two years or so. Um, uh, and yet again, the PHI cell is, is, is a very open, as you can see here, we do have other applications in this particular one, we're talking about transit, but we do have other other applications and commercial restaurants, hospitals, you name it. The PHI cell is utilized, like we said, over four million um, different type of uh, cells uh, in the in the market. So, um, go ahead. Oh. So yeah, we do have um, we do have other models in here that we definitely wants to like. If anybody is definitely interested, we try and RGF is very very well like we. I call it the the Disney effect. So we try to always keep uh, developing new products, as you can see in here, Lucidium, uh, Lucidium Polaris. We do have a lot of different products, as well as uh, in the commercial HEPAs filtration, you name it. In our applications, as you can see, we're in hospitality, residential offices, cannabis, medical, airports, uh, hundreds of different type of applications. So. Like I said before, Ray have done a very good job explaining our technology. He pretty much took about uh, a lot of the things that I wanted to say out there. You already discussed them. So um, I'm pretty much done. Any type of uh, questions that you guys have for me? Uh, very important to know, like Ray said in the video, PHI is an active, an active technology that is a, a, a difference from a passive technology, like we call it the bug sapper, which the, uh, the, the contaminants have to be in touch with the actual device in order to get a kill ratio or reduces it. And our active technology, uh, like, like Ray explained, we, it, it, our technology is out there. It goes out there and it, and it reduces all these viruses and bacteria. So those are pretty much the differences between the active and the passive technologies. So thank you. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Ram. I'm going to actually do the Q&A at the end of the uh, presentation here. I'm going to turn this over to, uh, to Patty. Uh, when you get a chance, Ram, just stop sharing your screen. And as I turn it over to Patty, I, I just want to recognize Green Bay Transit. Green Bay early on 
also did a lot of due diligence. Their team uh, was out early in the process trying to move away from the static disinfection and move to something active. And, and they were early adopters of this technology. Um, with that, Patty, let me turn it over to you uh, to, to tell your story of, of the installation of this technology in your fleet. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, so early on, you know, we're a little bit smaller fleet, so we're about 35 buses here. Uh, Pre-COVID, we provided um, approximately 1.3 million trips per year. Obviously, much less uh, given the current situation. Um, but, you know, we were no different than many other systems um, last year. We had a tremendous amount of resources going into surface cleaning and additional hours for staff to do that, um, a lot of chemicals and those types of things. And, you know, as I looked ahead at you know, how sustainable that was and what options there were. There were so many diff different um, technologies that were out there. We did a little bit of work on um, some of the options that we were there. What was really important to us is we didn't want chemicals. We didn't want things misted in the air. Um, and, you know, really maintenance was very important to us as well. Um, you know, I think we all know our maintenance teams. Um, that's, you know, pretty critical for them. So we wanted something that, that we felt was going to um, be safe is something that we could have, you know, do an investment in and do this long term and um, be satisfied with what we were receiving. And so as my maintenance team looked at different options that were out there, you know, one of the um, big things that they really enjoyed with the PHI system was the ease of the ongoing um, maintenance of this and especially all the testing results. And, you know, and as Ray said, we did jump on very early. We were very interested in doing this. So right, you know, after the testing was all complete and those types of things, we um, did jump on board immediately and we did do the entire fleet of our fixed route. And, you know, one thing that I do have to say is I've had, you know, worked with USSC previously um, as uh, with other products and, you know, that vendor relationship is pretty critical to me. Um, you know, no matter what in, you know, what you're purchasing from what vendor, um, I think we all know that sometimes there may be hiccups. To me, it's more important to know um, that, you know, you have somebody that stands behind that product and is going to provide the service to my team if that was to be needed. And so I think that, um, you know, the relationship that we have with our vendor and, you know, with USSC and of course, the service that we re previously received, we were very comfortable in moving ahead right off, um, right from the start with the entire fleet. Um, so, you know, that we were pretty excited for that. I will tell you that, um, you know, not, you know, there's so many new things going on last year and so many uh, different changes going on system wide. We just, like I said, we wanted to make sure that this was something that um, wasn't going to over inundate my staff uh, from a maintenance perspective. And that has gone very well for us. You know, the, the system, putting this in system in really helped us to reduce a lot of the um, cleaning that we had to do. Um, I will tell you that the you know, when you know, people ask me the cost savings and those types of things, and I said, there, there's definitely savings in the labor of having staff cleaning buses nonstop and trip after trip and all of those things. And with our team at night, it, it's really cut down on some of that additional cleaning we had to put into place. But I think, you know, one of the biggest things that maybe I can't put an exact dollar on, but I will tell you that the confidence that um, that we have helped to, re, um, to put back into our passengers utilizing the service, I think is much more valuable to me than, you know, almost anything that, you know, putting a versus putting a dollar limit on that. So, um, you know, I've received many compliments and, you know, many praises in regarding putting this on the buses. I think it makes the passengers um, definitely have more confidence. And I will tell you that, you know, I've heard from our union and from um, other staff that, you know, they truly can tell a difference with their sinuses and those types of things. When you're, when you're on a bus for eight to 12 hours a day, um, you know, that, that's a very big um, thing for them. So 
I will tell you that, you know, we've been, we've been very, very happy with the service and, or with the product and very happy with the outcome of it. And I know moving forward, this is something that, you know, we are going to look at um, with utilizing on our microtransit and our paratransit vehicles as well. Um, our main focus was uh, fixed route, of course, at first, um, just because of the reductions and the service so much on the other vehicles but you know we are super excited um, to have this and I know this is the technology that we are looking at with for our facility right now as well you know and I know Ray in his presentation had touched on the fact that you know everybody kind of focused on the SARS and the COVID which of course was you know very critical last year but I really think that you know it working on other viruses and the flu and all of those things we all know that's you know within our vehicles and to be honest I'm not sure if this is something that from a financial perspective, we would have been able to look at um, pre-COVID. So, you know, as much as that was a challenge last year, it really was a silver lining to for us to be able to um, receive some additional dollars to allow us to do some of these great things that assist in that uh, safety for our passengers as well as our drivers. Um, you know, one of the neat things for us, and this may be a very small thing, but I do always have to share this, that, um, you know, the, those lights on that bus, I mean, we have passengers that get on and that's the first thing they look for because they're like, oh, it's working. And so that that's really a neat thing. And, and as I said, I mean, that confidence in the public and those comments, I mean, I'm in public meetings right now for some other changes amongst the system. And I received comments regarding us having this um, air purification system on the buses and it had nothing to do with what we were discussing. We were discussing route changes. So um, it definitely is something that the public and the passengers are well aware of. So um, we were very excited to do it and definitely will continue with this. This is something we've been um, very happy with. If Patty, there's any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Patty, thank you so much for that overview. And, and we're actually going to do some Q&A at the end and, and okay. highlight a couple of things, Patty, that you pointed out there. Number one is I, I having grown up in maintenance operations, understand the importance of, uh, of picking up the phone. Uh, you know, if there is a, a question or there's an issue, we're not the representative, we're the manufacturer. When you call us, you're not going to call a rep who's going to call a manufacturer. You're going to call the manufacturer who's going to respond. Um, it's no different with RGF. You can look at our facilities. You can tour our facilities. We're proud of what we do. Uh, we are manufactured out of Exton, Pennsylvania. RGF is manufactured. The, the, the cell technology is manufactured out of the state of Florida. Uh, again, in that due diligence, in that I encourage anybody on this call or any customer mm -hmm. to, to look at the test reports. Patty's team was incredibly... Uh, detailed in their buildings, asking for test reports. You know, was this tested in a room or was it tested in a shoebox? You know, if they're going to say you killed something, did you kill it in in in, a, in, a, in an environment that, that replicates a vehicle, or was it done in a you know a one foot by one foot box, or did you use a surrogate like the common cold, or did you use the actual SARS-CoV-2 virus? Did you nebulize it in the air, or did you just uh, you know these are questions that I think are important because it's so critical and. You know, Patty's team and some of these other evaluations that we've gone through have all done this. And so um, thank you, Patty, for that that story and that input. I'm going to I'm going to turn this over now to Paul, Paul down in Broward in the sunshine with the palm tree. Uh, I know I know you missed the snowfall up in Boston, but uh, Paul, thanks. Oh. for hey, it's, it's all yours. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, again, my name is Paul Strobus. I'm the director of paratransit operations down here in Broward County Transit. Um, more known as the Fort Lauderdale area. Um, Pre-COVID, we were operating 400 fixed route buses, uh, 330 paratransit vehicles, 100 local community shuttles. Uh, we were doing about 35 million trips per year system-wide, 950,000 trips uh, within my paratransit program. You know, for me, when the pandemic hit our region, uh, South Florida was advertised nationally as one of the epicenters of COVID. It hit us very, very badly uh, early on. And so we immediately shut down our region, uh, had everybody stay home for non-emergency uh, services. Uh, but, you know, what I do is I transport people, seniors and, and people with disabilities. And a lot of those individuals needed to continue life-sustaining services. And so we had to find a way 
to, to meet that need and, and provide a safe environment to transport our most vulnerable population here in South Florida. And so, you know, we started looking at what, what all the steps we could do. And I'm sure many of you uh, took very common steps in, you know, mandating masks and, and stop collecting fares, which, you know, affects your operating budget, limited capacity of riders, uh, you know, rear, rear door boarding to protect your drivers um, in a paratransit vehicle because of the limited space, we couldn't even multi-load. We had to stop providing uh, shared service and provide single rides uh, to help protect both our frontline drivers and our paratransit uh, passengers. And so, you know, this led to obviously a financial strain um, that we had to try to address. And so we looked at what technologies would be out there to help us uh, to, to provide safe service uh, for our vulnerable population. And, you know, Ray did a wonderful job in his presentation and he's a hell of a salesman on, on telling you what this technology does. And the more I listened to Ray uh, in, in, in what the PHI technology did, it became a no brainer to me. You know, Patty mentioned a lot of, a lot of her uh, reasons for pulling the trigger. And I'm not one that usually goes in and tests two or three. I, I'll go in if I feel that the technology is worth it. And, and everything I saw told me this was something I needed to get into my buses ASAP. And so, uh, as Ray mentioned, the, the Florida Department of Transportation ran a statewide procurement uh, that they were so impressed with that product and made it available to all transit properties to piggyback off of and, and buy that technology. So I jumped right in. I've, I've actually already installed this in all of my paratransit uh, uh, cutaways and uh, we went with the the cap commuter unit that mounts on the wall of the bus and you know saturates the air of my my vehicle i've got about 750 square feet of of space in my paratransit vehicle so you know this unit which is rated for about a thousand square feet uh, made sense for us we've now been able to tell our customers we lost about 80 percent of ridership early on in the pandemic um, and but as the Vaccinations have been able to get out. People are starting to feel more comfortable getting out. Ridership's starting to get back to pre-pandemic. We're about 60% of where we were. Uh, but being able to tell them that we've got this active deterrent in our system has made a huge difference. The feedback that I've gotten from caregivers of putting their loved ones on our vehicles, our senior citizens feel comfortable getting out and, and getting out of that isolationism that they had with, with the, the pandemic uh, was huge. And, and, you know, as Patty said, it's that peace of mind, it's the optics that we're doing something to make the vehicle safer. And so for me, it was a no brainer. Um, just on the safety portion, I look at it as a long-term solution. We intend to make this a standard in our, in our fleet I've got 66 buses on order that'll be here uh, early uh, fall. It'll come with this unit installed in it. The, the 200 plus uh, that went in two months ago for me uh, was professionally installed by the USSC team. They sent a team down, did the full installation, worked with my technicians to show them how they were wiring it into the vehicle. Uh, the maintenance on it is basically nothing, uh, as they mentioned. So uh, for us, you know, the partnership with USSC has been great. They're calling me all the time. How's it going? You know, my, my rep has is, is been very responsive to any questions that we have. Um, and, you know, while it's early in, in, in the process, and, and again, like Patty said, I've had a couple of people ask me about cost savings. One thing I can tell you is, you know, when the, when the pandemic set off, we started looking at what was out there and you know foggers and those heavy chemicals to disinfect the buses every night it was costing me approximately twelve hundred dollars a night to have a team of nine guys go in and fog a bus then you got to go back after the fog sets and wipe it all down it was taking about 30 minutes a bus to to disinfect our vehicles so it was costing me almost twelve hundred dollars a night um 
to go out and put one of these units in the bus and return to normal uh, cleaning schedules, the return on investment was literally in a day and a half. Again, a no brainer for me using taxpayer dollars to fund our service that this unit could be so effective in, in helping us mitigate the spread of COVID. And as you know, they mentioned, it's not just COVID. I also look at this now moving forward, what other cost savings can we recognize by providing a cleaner environment for our riders and our drivers? Could it affect a, attendance? Could we make it so that less drivers are getting ill by transporting our senior and disabled populations who are usually using it for medical appointments? You know, if it, if it can help us with the flu and the other germs, uh, you know, we're in South Florida, we deal with mold and mildew all the time uh, because of the humidity in our air. Uh, these were all benefits that we saw that, that uh, prompted us to go out and buy it. Another note, um, as, as they mentioned, uh, the manufacturing plant, RGF's about 30 miles north of me. I was lucky enough to go up and see their facility and Rom, in any future uh, presentation, I recommend you add, they're an ISO certified shop. You know, for anybody who knows what ISO means, that tells me that the quality of the product they're building is immense. ISO certification standards are uh, known across the manufacturing world as, you know, the top notch. And so when I went through and visited that facility and saw the manufacturing of the cells, uh, again, made me feel good about the product that we're putting in our buses. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here if anybody has any questions and uh, thank you. Well, thank you so much. I'm actually going to uh, ask the, the, uh, the speakers, Patty and Ram, to turn the cameras on um, and, and uh, we'll, we'll do some Q&A. I wanted to highlight a few things before we open this up to Q&A that both Patty and Paul hit on. One is uh, when, when Patty had this installed in her fleet, she wanted uh, these are the, that particular installation was in duct and she wanted her customers and her operators to have visible signs that air purification within that vehicle was active. And so in her installation, uh, in the first fit process, we met with her team and inside that vehicle, you'll see LEDs indicating these, these are active. These are solid state units. They're installed in the duct and they're active. And what, what Paul had mentioned, um, essentially the same, his, his are external units. These are surface mount units, the CAPS commuter. Uh, and they're visible, but, but we've had properties where they actually scroll on their de interior destination signs, air purification active. And I think the point is really uh, regaining the confidence of ridership, knowing that there's technology deployed to treat that air around them uh, with, uh, with, with this, with this uh, air treatment, with these molecular hydroperoxides. And so uh, the other thing I highlight, and, and I'm gonna open it up to the group here, uh, Paul, you mentioned ISO certification, both RGF and U United Safety and Survivability, ISO 9001 certified, ISO 14001 certified, EPA registered facility. Uh, we've done extensive testing. We're not just taking a product that was used in a building and putting it in a bus. We've done uh, shock and vibe testing. We've done a, a tremendous number of SAE tests, uh, railway testing. And so we really take, uh, you know, our supply serious of this product and, and, Appreciate everybody uh, listening in on the content here. I, let me turn it over for any questions from the audience. Hi, Ray, it's Karen with Opta. Uh, I do have a, a question here that is, has come in. Uh, it says, uh, has this technology been tested with in-service transit vehicles by a competent and qualified third party to ensure testing accurately reflects operational uh, operational scenarios and is the data available for review? Yeah, I mean, it's been tested by a number of transit systems um, and it's been tested by, by third party. Uh, so I, I'm gonna highlight a few and some of these properties do testing on their own. So it's, uh, we, we have no issue providing that test information. Um, Cap Metro down in Austin used a certified hygienist before making the decision to go this direction. And they were, you know, very, very uh, critical of the different technologies that were available. And they chose this as their primary technology. Um, the CDTA up in Albany, uh, I highlighted the, the FICEL technology, but they didn't test just our technology. They tested multiple technologies and they found, uh, you know, our technology to be the most effective really at sustained suppression. I'd offer uh, this group contact information there. 
Um, and then the, the, the more in-depth testing was WSP uh, that, that did uh, very in-depth testing, certified hygienist, went onto a vehicle and, and measured bacterial counts in the air and on the surfaces while the vehicle was in service. We're not talking about a lab. We're talking about real life people, some masks on, some masks off, some bus crowding, no physical distancing in some cases. Um, and they did very extensive uh, testing. That went back to a lab. They measured colony forming units to, to measure the bacterial counts. And that showed uh, clear suppression of these microbials in the air and on the surface uh, over the day. We'd be happy to share any of that information. Thanks, Ray. I don't have any other questions in the chat. Uh, so maybe if folks have it, they can unmute and, and, and ask that way or in the chat. So I have a question. So my name is Ping. I'm calling from city of Mississauga in Canada. Uh, from what I heard is this new technology will provide air and surface treatment is like preventing COVID and things like that. But there's no way it can replace the normal cleaning of our buses, right? So for example, like we have wash bay, we have staff, every night we'll clean the bus for like physical vomiting or anything. So these things have still had to be done, but your is just like, it's more like a COVID-19 related application. Am I right? I would just I would add a couple things. Um, it's not new technology, been around for decades. Um, we've simply applied it to rolling stock. What I would say is this allows you to go back to more routine cleaning and disinfection cycles. Paul mentioned and, and quite a few properties um, uh, early on in, 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 in the COVID-19 pandemic invested in misters um, that would miss the interior of the vehicles or they invested in static UV bulbs. Um, or they just did uh, uh, disinfection two times a day. Think about the manual labor and, and the disinfection, uh, the ke chemicals you're using. What, we, what, we, what we've shown through testing and what these properties have shown us through their own testing is the application of this technology allows you to improve the safety and cleanliness inside that vehicle and return to more routine cleaning and disinfection cycles. Um, we don't uh, we don't prevent COVID-19, we actively treat it. And I think that was one of the things you mentioned. So we don't, there's no way to prevent it. If somebody has the seasonal flu or they have COVID-19, they walk onto the vehicle, they have that. We simply treat the air envelope around those individuals all day long. So is this technology will replace the, the normal AEGIS spray for the fabric cleaning? Because right now we have annual like AEGIS spray. To, to prevent like the fabric, they will be in good condition to prevent any, you know, disease or food. So this is just a replacement. It's a new, it's a technology rather than the spray. It doesn't replace. Uh, we have properties uh, that, that, that use Aegis Microband and we have properties that use both. Uh, Spartan Transit, an example down in, in, in the state of Texas, they wanted a, they wanted what they call a sterile bus. It was a sterile bus pro project. And so they installed active air and they also treated their surfaces with Aegis Microband. In my presentation, I highlighted the one, two punch. Um, active air, phi cell, because hydrogen peroxide is heavier than air, you have a continuous production of hydrogen peroxides. These hydrogen peroxides disperse, saturate the interior of the vehicle, uh, 0.02 parts per million into parts per billion, but you're talking about hundreds of thousands of molecules around people in that vehicle but they're heavier than air. And so they settle, they settle the surfaces. And so they clean both air and surfaces. Aegis Microband allows you to extend um, your, your cleaning, uh, your, your keeping your surfaces cleaner in between cleanings. It's an antimicrobial, it's, and, and we consider those two things the one-two punch. They complement one another. So uh, they're, they're both part of our COVID mitigation toolbox, our, our viral mitigation toolbox is the way I would describe it, Ping. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Ray, there's another question in the chat um, asking about the cost per unit in Ontario. So um, we have done, and it really depends on volume. Both Paul and Patty chose a turnkey solution, meaning that both of their, uh, both of their projects involve the purchase of the units with full installation and support. Um, if you're just looking at having the product um, I'm just trying to do the, the, the quick math. A, a standard list price on a unit in US dollars for a 40 foot bus, to give you an idea, 
would be $3,500. Um, but those prices um, will vary, obviously, depending on the application. Uh, for example, a double-decker vehicle may be slightly different than a standard 40-foot bus, and an RTIC is different. Um, each, each application is somewhat unique. Thanks, Ray. Uh, again, I, that's uh, all the questions in the chat for now. If uh, anyone on the line has a question, you can either unmute or, or use the chat. You know, I think one of the things while we're looking for additional questions, uh, I think Paul and Patty both opened up about some of the operational challenges of running a fleet in the middle of, of a pandemic. And I know we have folks on the call here that are in operations. Um, feel free to, you know, uh, share those challenges or, or ask about the return on investment uh, relative to current practices compared to what you would see if you installed uh, Ficel technology or utilized an antimicrobial on your surfaces. Any folks in operations uh, want to share some of the challenges or speak to that or, or ask Paul or Patty? This is a quiet crowd. Paul and Patty, I think you did so well that, that uh, Ray, I was actually going to just um, mention one other thing that, you know, as you talked about installation, you were correct. I mean, it was a turnkey for us where we had you install everything. Um, and I just want to say that that was absolutely a great uh, process for us to go through. I apologize for that. But that was, you know, very well done. I know it, they worked very well with our maintenance staff and helped our maintenance staff to be able to troubleshoot things if they were to occur, what to watch for. So I think for those that, you know, uh, do choose to have you all install it, it was definitely a great experience and I would highly recommend that. So it was very, very good. Yes, yeah, thank you, Patty. And, and uh, yeah, thank you, Patty. You broke up a little bit there at the end, but I did, I did want to highlight that, that um, for properties that want to have this installed on their own, we, we don't just deliver the boxes with kits. We actually come out, our team will do a first fit and they'll train your team on the installation um, and then make sure that we cover uh, all of the life, life cycle requirements. You know, that there is uh, the maintenance aspect of this. Um, you know, we want to make sure that you know what the recurring requirements are. Um, it is a maintenance-free system. Paul indicated that um, every year maintenance free in terms of there's no additional product you have to add to anything or it, it works using moisture in the air, converting it to hydroperoxides at the molecular level. There is a, a, a ballast that's replaced once a year and that is the annual maintenance requirement. Um, any Anything in the question box, Q and A, Karen? No, hey, no. Yes. Ray, I'm just kind of curious, this is Joe Reed, City of Bubble. Um, do you have a team that does the install here in Ontario or Canada, um, you know, yeah, rather than sending them from the States or? Yes, sir. Um, so we we uh, have both uh, we have boots on the ground in Canada and in the states, um, and obviously with the the current uh, restrictions, that's important. So when there's uh, we have a, a number of properties in Canada that are walking through testing and various options, but we do have technical support available in the Canadians Canadian markets as well. Okay, thank uh, you. I'll, I'll just add to that, Joe. It's uh, Barry Dykeman here. Um, I'll just add that uh, we've done outside of transit, we've done recently some installations, uh, school bus side and uh, in Southern Ontario using uh, some contractors for that as well. So yeah, we're all set. Okay, that's, uh, that's great. I'm, I'm sure Paul and I all have a discussion and we'll re reach out. Yeah, we, uh, for folks, as we're waiting on any questions and if there are no questions, we'll, we'll try to bring this to a close here shortly. I, I, would, I would say, I invite the, the questions, I invite the, the um, inquiries on testing and the, the questions. And, and I think diligence is important. I, I encourage our entire customer base, the industry to ask the questions because there are a lot of products out there um, and, and asking the right questions can sometimes sift through. Uh, maybe some products aren't manufactured um, in, in the North American market in either Canada or the US. Maybe some products do not have the same test criteria. Um, when I take a look at RGF and, and Paul, I, I really appreciate you uh, sharing the story of walking through RGF. This, this is not 
a, um, this is not a small operation. They've been around for many, many years. They take what they do very seriously. Um, and, and asking the right questions and performing that due diligence is helpful to our interests. And uh, we appreciate folks in operations asking those tough questions. And Ray, just, just, to, um, just to clarify it and go in a little bit more about what Paul said, we are always open. There's always an open invitation for those who wanna um, uh, visit the facilities and um, go around, we'll do fa uh, factory tours and explain more about the technology showing, uh, showing the uh, different type of products in here, like Paul saw in, uh, in our chart tank. So we are more than glad to have whoever wants to come in and visit the facilities. Yes, and, and why not make a trip down to South Florida, right, Ram? I mean, that, that's really the, the, <laughs> the invite. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it, so the interesting part when you walk through RGF, and I, I know we said we have some competitive interests on the call today, so it's always interesting. The interesting part when you talk about RGF is um, they walk through all the technologies. So, I mean, I highlighted FISEL on this, but right. so, I mean, we can sell ionizers, we can sell PCO devices, we can sell just about any air treatment technology you can think of, um, we offer. We simply say that all the testing shows that FISEL photohydroionization is the best relative to viral and bacterial pathogens in this environment. Ionizers are used for different reasons, uh, you know, commercially. And, and so, you know, it, it's, it's more than a sales pitch. It's an educational uh, 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 trip for, for anybody that's looking at these different options. I think that's Any, anything point, else, Ray, If I just make another comment. So, you know, public transit, mass transit's role is, is, to move as many people as possible. You know, COVID really went against the grain on public transit where grouping people together was bad. And, and so, you know, I look at it, having that active deterrent versus what you call the bug zapper system, I, it almost has to become standard moving forward. Uh, the more I learn about this technology, uh, the more I see the benefits that, you know, for me in South Florida, traffic gridlock is a mess. We're trying to we're trying to get people out of individual cars and and find ways to move people more efficiently. And you know to be able to have this as a standard installation, um, again the optics to the public is it it's safe to get back on public transit, whether it's a a paratransit bus uh, for your senior mother or, or your or your disabled son whether it's a 40 foot bus, a 60 foot bus or a train, um, you know, I, I think going forward, because COVID is not going to be the last virus that hits us. You're always going to have the flu. You're always going to have germs. And for it to be able to treat the air around the people in the bus, you know, we don't want to end up being like China where everybody just wears a mask all day long, uh, every day. You know, we want to get back to not having to wear the masks and, and, and feel safe in those environments. And, you know, beyond just the germs and the viruses also, it helps with odors. Um, you know, if you're driving in a, in a diesel bus, you know, this is helping treat the air there too. Um, so again, for me as a, as a public transit professional, 20 plus years, uh, I just can't say enough with my support on this product, so. Paul, well, thank you very much. And Patty, Patty mentioned this and, and I think you know, Paul, you highlighted, and I should emphasize it, that we talked about SARS-CoV-2. You mentioned the seasonal flu. Listen, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. And coming through this pandemic, one of the things we learned is we can make transit safer uh, for the next uh, pandemic or, or uh, an outbreak of the seasonal flu. We can make public transit safer. You mentioned, Paul, and I think it's important that when we talk about reduction of viral pathogens and bacterial pathogens, you also talk about the reduction of odors inside that vehicle. Patty mentioned sinuses, you know, allergens, um, you know, things that impact. Think about that driver being in that vehicle for eight hours a day. How can we improve their quality of life? And, and this is one of the ways we can do it. Not only make them safer, but also make them more comfortable in that environment. Um, if you have fabric inside of a vehicle, uh, having, you know, been in public transit for many, many years, we know that that fabric can harbor odors. And with this constant active treatment, of, of uh, bacterial pathogens inside that vehicle with hydrogen peroxide, molecular hydrogen peroxide, we have the ability to change the odor inside that vehicle. Um, 
Sometimes it may take two, three weeks to, to notice a difference, but over time you notice a technical smell. It kind of gives you the, the dentist office smell is the way I describe it. It's, it's just a different type of interior environment. And so any other questions, Karen, come in. Yes, just have another one uh, uh, asking about the application of this kind of system on electric buses or zero emission buses, given the, the direction of the industry, any impacts there? No, we've done a number of electric buses. Uh, we, we see, uh, it, you know, it, obviously in the States, everybody's reading about the investments that are being made in, in the e-drive platforms. And we're seeing the same trend in the Canadian markets. Um, our technical team has done these installations in every vehicle that is on the road today. So if you're looking at Proterra vehicles, we've done, and it's not just, again, we don't ship a box. Our, tech, our engineers go on site. They look at the correct placement of these units. They, they work with your, your team to make sure that, that there's a, a full process and the installation is performed. Um, BYD, Proterra, uh, uh, vicinity, any of the vehicle manufacturers you can think of, uh, we've touched and we've done first fits and we would do that first fit unique to your requirements. If you preferred, you know, uh, instead of on the sidewall, if you preferred it on the ceiling or behind the driver, we work with uh, each fleet um, and, and determine their, their unique placements based upon their needs. I, I would just add to that, if anybody, whoever asked the question there, if you're wondering about power draw, the, it's, it's insignificant to uh, any sort of draw on the power for the bus. It would run on the low voltage side of the bus as opposed to high voltage. So. Um, and the power requirement is very low, so there's really no concern there. You're looking at about an amp per unit. Any other questions? That's it for now. Well, hearing no other questions, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody. I think this is a very timely topic given what we're, what, what, uh, we're coming out of from a pandemic standpoint. Really want to express my appreciation to uh, Patty and Paul for sharing their stories. It's one thing for us to talk about what we manufacture and sell and support. It's another thing to hear the stories from the field. And I want to thank Ram for sharing the RGF uh, perspective. We wouldn't be where we are without RGF. Our technical team interviewed a number of different firms and, and looked at a number of different technologies. And RGF was the clear leader, not because not, not only because of what they make, but also because of how seriously they take the testing and validation process. And so um, with that, uh, Karen, I'll, I'll turn it back to you for, for a close here. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to thank Ray and Barry and United Safety and Survivability Corporation for participating in uh, offering this Opta Live web webinar to uh, Opta members. Uh, we're very thankful for your time. This presentation has been recorded and everyone that participated today will receive notification when that recording is available on the Opta website. I'm sure you're, you're going to have staff that you're going to want to, to share that with. So again, thank you. Uh, to Ray, to Patty, uh, to, to Paul and Rom. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Have a great day, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you as well, Karen. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.